Welcome back, Swag Team. It's your boy, the Swagologist, back again with another movie review. And today we're doing the spoiler review for Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, um, I love this film, as y'all already know. So let's just dive right into it. If you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're here. It already says spoiler review, but just in case, stop the video right here. Pause it, put it in your watch later or whatever. Go see the film, like, right now. Just go. Just go do it now. Go see it right now. Unless it's like, of course, 2 o'clock in the morning and you're watching this. Then wait till it comes up and go see it now before it goes out of theaters because it's epic. And especially if you've seen Endgame. Now, if you haven't seen Endgame, see that first somehow. I think it's out on digital now almost. They're getting there. Or if not, you can always hit up Cody. They got it. Watch it. Then see Spider-Man Far From Home. And then you're in there with your boy. But anyways... Enough, enough of the disclaimers. Let's get right into it. Now, I love this film. Like I said, it was a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. But I only had one issue that I couldn't talk to y'all about in the regular review that I could talk about it now because it's a spoiler. And about the multiverse. I was the reason I didn't like love, love that film at first. And now I like love it is because the multiverse was teased in the trailer. And I really, and then people started making these pictures of, just imagine this one tap and one tap. I may have said this before, but just imagine. The multiverse is a real thing, right? And you have Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and Tom Holland's Spider-Man all together meeting each other for the first time and going out on an adventure together to save the planet. Are you kidding me? Take my money now. <laughs> Take it right now now but yeah so that would have been absolute fire and i just still pray that that's happening now you know i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do a new series called swagology 101 where i bring up um like stuff that's in the news or, or information that that y'all might not know about that i'm excited about like the mcu slate now the mcu slate there's a movie that has the multiverse in the title you know what i'm saying so i'm like Oh, the multiverse is real. It is real. And then I watched Doctor Strange, and that's the, the title that I'm referring to, but I don't want to ruin it for my future video. But you, you, you get me. The multiverse was brought up in Doctor Strange, which means it's already a legit thing. It's just the Quentin Beck version that he brought up wasn't real. But that don't mean the multiverse is real. Ain't real. Plus, the director himself even said, I mean... Our multiverse isn't real, but it doesn't mean that multiverse is not actually real. But yeah, that's the big deal. That's the reason I was like, kind of like, meh, kind of disappointed. And it kind of killed my vibe a little bit at first is because I found out the multiverse wasn't real. But Quentin Beck revealed himself to be in the villain, which I knew he's going to be the villain. But I was hoping he's going to reveal himself to be the villain. But the multiverse was still going to be revealed to be real. You know what I mean? So I was like, dang, why did that happen? But... It's all good. It's all good. Water on the bridge. I love the film now. But anyways, yeah, that was one thing. Now, these after credit scenes, bruh. <laughs> oh my god. If you managed to see this film, but did not stay for the after credits, you are doing yourself a disservice. It's a different movie. It's a different movie because if you just watch the way it is and then leave after when the credits start, then yes, you beat traffic, but then again... Like, come on, Marvel fans. We already know. We gotta sit. We gotta stay till the credits are done and finished. I know Avengers may have let some people down with that. Y'all was like, well, I guess they're not doing this anymore. No, they're still doing it. And with Spider-Man, when it ends at the beginning, if you left, it just seems like a real happy ending and cool. But if you stay with them after credits, though, not to mention the greatest cameo I've seen in a long time happen. And it's not even a cameo. I think he's just back the character. They just dropped J. Jonah Jameson on the screen. Because the first... Okay. You know how at the end he swings with um, Zendaya's character, MJ. He swings with her. And for the first time we saw someone actually terrified <laughs> of doing the swinging. Because if you imagine it, they did a riff on it. I love it. I love when superhero films start doing riffs on the other superhero films. And it's just perfect comedy when they do that. Because you don't expect it. And they did it with that. And I loved it. Um, but anyways, so when they swung, they landed. She was like, yeah, we're not, no, no, we're not doing that again. Then all of a sudden, you see this uh, news 
um, thing pop up. And, you know, through this film, we've seen news pop up, so it wasn't a big deal. It was like CNN-ish looking thing, right? But all of a sudden, they're like, Quentin Beck comes on the screen, Mysterio, and he's in his like Mysterio garb and stuff. And he's acting like um, when uh, Tom Holland earlier, Peter Parker, had Edith glasses on and was talking about kill the drones. But he was like, kill, he, he edited it. He had his team edit it to where it sounds like he's killing everybody and he sent all the drones on everybody. In which, of course, that did not take place. And he made it seem like Myster they ki that he killed Mysterio. And Mysterio still, still, as of right now, to everybody on the planet, is a hero. And now he made it seem like that Peter Parker is a, um, a villain. And guess who's giving out the information before that? That gave that told people about this video. None other than J. Jonah Jameson. But that's not even the biggest deal. The biggest deal is they brought J.K. Simmons back from the Remy universe back to be J. Jonah Jameson. Now, I don't think this is a multiverse thing where that's the Remy's um, J. Jonah Jameson back from that universe to here. I don't think they're going that route. That would be insane, but they already ruined the fact that the multiverse is not officially in the MCU just yet. We gotta wait for Doctor Strange. But what they did do is bring back uh, like the goat of J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> like this dude is the best J. Jonah Jameson. So as soon as I literally, I audibly was like, yes, when he came on the screen. I literally did that in the theater. I had so I loved that so much. Great, great stunt casting. Very beautiful. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. But anyway, he did that. Then they all of a sudden, like I said, they did the video with that Quentin Beck edited. And you're thinking it's like, dang, really? Really? But then on top of that, the double down on the screw, the screw Peter verse right now, you know what I'm saying? He comes back and he tells the whole China planet. Now I thought it was going to cut off because <laughs> it was like, and um, Peter Park, I mean, um, Spider Man's real identity. Like, I didn't tell the cops or whatever he said, something like that. He's like, his real identity he's, is, and then it edited, and then it came back, and he actually said it Peter Parker. And they showed a picture, and then it goes to Spider Man, he's like, what the fuck? And then it cuts off. And you're like, yo. So he just gave all the information out. To the world so now everybody knows who spider-man is i'm trying to figure out what they're gonna do is spider-man gonna figure out a way to trick everybody to not knowing that he's spider-man by like having like flash dress up as him or something like that like he's done before where he has somebody else dress up as him act as if he's him and then come back later or what is he gonna do it's 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 insane an insane credit scene it was it was my it was it was mind boggling. Speaking of thing that I didn't speak about before, I don't think the eat of glasses. I love that as an acronym, like everything else that Tony makes is an acronym for something else. And this acronym was also the acronym for his eat of glasses because of course he you know spoilers for Endgame because I've already established that the people that should have seen Endgame is gone now. But spoilers for Endgame. I say again, this is spoilers for Endgame. If you have not seen it, um. In game, go now. Um, the eat of glasses because Tony saved the entire planet with his snap and saved the world. He calls the glasses even dead. I'm the hero. Love that. <laughs> so Tony, to Tony is never gonna not be Tony, even in death. <laughs> so it's like even death, even dead. I'm the hero. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that's, that's the name of the glasses acronym. I love that he gave it to Peter Parker. That was awesome. And then you come to find out, because a lot of people during the movie, I, I'm not like this. When I see a movie, I just let the movie tell me the truth. I don't tell the movie the truth. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I let, I let the movie tell me its truth, and I don't tell the movie what its truth is. You know what I mean? But some people were sitting there like, why is... You know, why on earth is um, Nick Fury not knowing what the hell is going on? Why is he getting tricked by Quentin Beck? Because I know in the comics, he is literally good enough to trick Nick Fury. He's done it before in the comics. But some people just wasn't feeling that for our super spy, Nick Fury. And I, I mean, I get it. 
he is like a, this, the greatest spy ever. I mean, 007 where? <laughs> Jason Bourne who? You know what I'm talking about? But he didn't know what was going on. But you come to find out with the second credit scene that he's actually Talos. I think that's how you call him. Um, you know, in disguise. You know what I'm saying? As Nick Fury, both him and his wife took over um, Maria Hill's character and Nick Fury. And they became the, that agent in him. So they took over for Nick Fury. While Nick Fury, and you think at first he's like on a beach chilling. No, sir. He is actually in space with Captain Marvel and the rest of the scrolls taking care of business up there. So that's interesting. I wonder how far they're going to go with that in the storylines. I know we're going cosmic. So I'm guessing that's the main reason he's up there taking care of cosmic business. But I'm very curious. All my speculation, um, you know, tingles are going. <laughs> Peter Tingle. That's always funny. I, I, I kind of hope they still call it spider I was kind of getting, feeling a little disrespected. Being a Spider-Man fan, <laughs> they keep calling it Peter Tingle. But I digress. It was funny. It works, but yeah, love. Um, I love that we found out that okay, that's what was wrong with Nick Fury. He wasn't a, he's not a complete idiot because <laughs> he's not an idiot. It's just his level of greatness as a spy. There is no way he would know what's going on for most people. For me, I'm like his level of greatness of faking people out as in Mysterio is that high. It makes sense, and I love what they did. How his magic works. That's what I was curious on is how his magic works, and it works with um drones like because i knew he was he's a projection genius and stuff like that and it's all drones and i liked his team is all through the mcu they like went back to older films and like these characters that they used to help pull off this great fake out was people that it got screwed over by tony in some kind of way and all want to go back and get them because of course that's how most of these villains have an issue with or most people have issues with either Tony or the Avengers. And that's how it works. Kind of like, and most of the Spider-Man villains, I'm just realizing this. Just hold on a second. The Vulture in the first Spider-Man had an issue with Tony and now Mysterio has an issue with Tony. It seems like every superhero villain, I mean, every villain that has to do with Spider-Man's world has an issue with Tony Stark. But I don't know if they're going to keep that running with the next one. We will see. But I find that interesting now that I just thought about it. But yeah, so it was crazy. The after credit scenes were just insane. Like, <laughs> insane. And I so am happy about J Jonah Jameson being back, especially as J.K. Simmons. I really pray that's our J. Jonah Jameson for the rest of the time, and I think it is. But I love that reveal. It was amazing. Um, let me see. Anything else that I wanted to mention before I sign off here? With the spoiler review for Far From Home. Um, that, that that stuff was just crazy. Insane. But yeah, that was my only big bugaboo. Is that the multiverse is not a real thing yet. But now I have hope from all that stuff that I did mention afterwards. After going on the riff about it. But yeah. Let me know how you feel though. About Spider-Man Far From Home. Spoiler heavy review. Down below in the comment section. Let me know. Let's talk about Spider-Man Far From Home. Because I haven't seen it in a minute. I want to see it again. And I, I love talking Spidey as you should know by now. So please conversate with your boy. Let me know in the comment section below. How you feel about Spider-Man Far From Home. Also if you like this video. And you love yourself some Spider-Man. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It helps with the channel. Make sure you don't forget to do that if you liked it. If you didn't like it, you don't have to. No worries. I'm not tripping. But also, if you're new here and you're trying to join the swag team, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below or hit it right here when it pops up on the side. Also, if you want to be the first of the swag team to see a video when it pops up on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the swag team. Then when that bell pops up, because it will pop up only if you subscribe. So make sure you join the swag team so you don't miss out. Get that bell. Click that. Then you'll never miss a video when it pops up on YouTube. It'll um, notify you on your cell phone, tablet, computer, whatever. So make sure you do that so you never miss some of this swag when it hits up on YouTube. Also, we have a Facebook, a Twitter, and an IG. The Facebook is the same as the channel. The Swagologist, but you could also hit me up on Twitter on IG, at Swagologist D. That is at Swagologist D. Hit me up on Twitter, the Gram, or Facebook, and we can talk all things Swag you, all things Swagologist, and all things Spider-Man Far From Home. So please hit me up 
love talking spidey let me know if i miss anything about in the spoiler review that you really wanted to go over i'm more than happy to go over it with you in the comment section below or on the social media sites but until the next video i love y'all 3000 i'll holla peace